I just I say I'm your prison lawyer. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? This is SF Mo, your prison lawyer, and I want to say what's up, my man. What's up, Ron? Be in the middle. What's up with you? Um, also, I want to say what's up to our fans who support us. Who support us? Um, thank you. Uh, like I said many a times, we don't need hundred million people following us. We just need you. Support. Share, like, um, and you know I don't, you know I don't tap dance, I don't dance. You're not here to see me rap, tell, 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 uh, uh, tell jokes. Don't do that. Just give it to you raw. Give it to you all. This is SF Mo. And right off the bat, I want to uh, say I'm happy. A boycott is working. Um, on Wednesday, you know, Target laid bare to the damage from mark marking down its mountain of inventory. So. Target uh, in the second quarter seeing a 90% slump in, in their profits. Great. Fantastic. Our boycott is working. Our boycott is working. Uh, thanks to all you individuals who have been boycotting Target um, consciously, subconsciously, not shopping with those individuals for whatever reasons. I have my reasons. I'm sure a lot of you have your reasons why. But let's continue to pressure. Let's continue until they figure it out. It's not economics, not inflation. People don't want your funny color dishes. Um, people don't want to deal with your white supremacy tactics that you call, whatever you call. Um, and um, we can get further into that, but let's just break down the economics of why they think that Target is not performing as well. So they can they can justify it. They, they use economics as it is social economics, but they want to just specifically say economics. They want to say, they want to pit our, our Walmart against Target and say, well, Walmart did a decent job. They suffered some losses, but not um, as severe as Target. And the reasons why is because what they call discretionary shopping. Um, being Target has all these discretionary goods and Walmart doesn't. They have the same shit. You know, I mean, if you look in their stores, they're offering pretty much the same shit. Maybe Target doesn't have it at the same level Walmart has it at. Um, maybe not even at the same prices. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. I just know they really carry the same shit. Tar Target is supposed to be higher, higher line in Walmart, but it's the same garbage, funny color dishes, shit you don't need stuff that your kids want that they don't need. Um, and I'm not for Target or Walmart. Let's get it straight right now. The, f the reason I'm further in it with Target is because as you can, you will see, as we break this down, Target is a little bit more devious at what they're doing um, and how they spend their money. Walmart, even though I don't like Walmart, they try to be all inclusive, right? You don't see as many Caucasians working at Walmart or shopping at Walmart. Um, and they've done a lot to bring in that business. But I'm not here talking econ on economics. I'm talking social economics, right? So it came down. They were like, okay, it was discretionary goods that caused it. And I look at discretionary goods, again, as being perishable, non-perishable. To me, they really carry the same amount, uh, same type of inventory, um, a target with its funny color dishes and whatever, whatever you have, um, a little bit different than Walmart. But yet, and still, we know that it was the us consciously boycotting Target that played a part, I'm not saying holistically or in totality, I'm saying in totality, but not pointing to one factor because it's, it, it is the economy and inflation. People are not spending discretionary goods, but, and, and two, people are consciously, subconsciously, consciously uh, understanding that Target does no good for our community um, because they have no social connectivity to the community, right? They have this vision of the safe city. And if you saw my last episode about the Jetsons, you know, they have this cleansing understanding of cleansing the city and, and making it crime free. But crime free in their discretion is the, removing it of all the individuals that does not look like them, similar to their stores. Right. So, you know, in the whole retail, retail context, this conversation falls into retail. But I like to break it down further at a social understanding. So we know back in 2017 that there was an article written. This is this is before George Floyd. Right. This is 2017. Right. Articles written about people boycotting Target. And it was it was no for, for, for us. There was there, I mean, Target being burnt down was just part and partial to the problem. Right. Knowing their history. 
Um, so, so in 2017, we're asking this question. Why are we? Why don't we ask this question again in 2022? Is is the boycott affecting people? Because we nobody just hasn't stopped. Because targets still continue in with the same practices that they've always practiced. So I'm asking that question, right? I'm saying, is it our boycott that's causing target? sales slumps and can we continue it until target either comes to the table or target does not exist anymore and when i say come to the table target what i'm telling you is atone for your sins and and try to correct this irreparable harm that you've caused in our communities right and we're not asking you for no damn jobs we're not coming to you for no damn handouts we want you to correct the problems that you caused so when you say that SFMO, what do you mean? It's SFMO, your prison lawyer. This is SFMO, your prison lawyer. You know, <laughs> real pit. What do you mean? I want to bring you back. First of all, for those individuals, the, the couple of people who did not see the whole Jetson episode. Um, and I mean, that in itself, I, I did it for a reason, right? The Jetson episodes was done for a reason because I'm trying to build up to a point well, we can understand Ahmadi Ali's case and why is it why is it why is it should be looked as a as a trend? These big corporations, Amazon's and the Targets, um, Google's and Facebooks, they're all getting together um, to create this 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 system um, for whatever reason. Um, so back in 2003, uh, 20, uh, 2003 uh, Safe City uh, uh, Target launched Safe City. Um, Safe City is was was um, a project they, uh, for crime prison. It was a crime, for big, uh, crime prevention model that was, which, uh, was going to be implemented in designated retail areas and jurisdictions across the United States. They picked four um, places. Not many, they probably already doing in Minneapolis, but they put they picked four cities to implement this in as a project, as a pilot program. And the, they were going to, the, the, the model is, is characterized by frequent meetings and information sharing. So the connectivity between the retail department and police, um, neighborhood retails along with enhanced technology. So what they're talking about, facial recognition, they're, they're talking about whatever they can utilize far as um, databases of individuals who are known, who've committed crimes, right? Uh, similar to their uh, background checks and can, uh, not a lot. So they don't want you to work for them, but they also don't want you, want you in their stores. Um, and also in a hundred mile, they, this doesn't, this doesn't, it does, it'd be great if it was just in their stores. So you're like, fuck you, fuck your store. But they're doing a hundred mile radius of where their stores are located. So around their stores. So what they're doing is, they're creating a safe city, right? They're getting rid of the homeless. Anybody could be construed as not being able to, or, or not, not spending money in Target. They want you away from their stores. So um, I'm gonna keep on going with their their partnerships with this, or or um, along with enhanced technology such as the use of radio to networks, um, enable real time communication with safe city partners, and implementation an implementation of closed curt circuit TVs. We talked about this closed circuit TVs in Minneapolis and how they increase the closed circuit TVs and how now they're using networks of from 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 closed circuits TVs to being able to network into other uh, areas and utilize that footage for whatever reason. All right. Um, re uh, they also research partnerships also employed situation situational crime prevention so they're trying to keep everything in this crime prevention area so it makes sense it doesn't look like they're not selling these funny color dishes anymore it just looks like they're concerned with the community and 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 uh, they, making they sure they they of uh product is minimal minimize okay so it doesn't it doesn't doesn't it doesn't pique anybody's interest like oh they're just target doing target things making sure we're safe who the question i guess you need to ask is who's safe who's safe it's not you safe is who's safe right i think the biggest uh specific so so what i what i felt the real uh acknowledge is that at, after 2003 target reaches reaches out to the urban institute um with the grant with grant money 
uh, with seed money, but grant money coming from the National Institute of Justice for them to um, engage in an action of research, a partnership to evaluate the implement implementation of this the safe city. So after they they piloted it in these four cities, they then asked uh, a third party to write a peer review. And that's what it's usually called. And the reason you write a peer review, if anybody's actually read a peer review, it's basically so you substantiate uh, credibility in whatever community you're trying to. If it's if it's, it's a science or if it's, in this case, it's criminal justice, you want people to refer to your paper as innovation or this is what the new thing you start talking about, especially people coming out of um, these uh, criminal justice programs. Um, they want them to start referring to your program. So you go get a third party, right? And this is how history has always been. This is this how they created history and have individuals quoting things that make no sense, that are lies, um, because they go get supposedly third parties to write these papers as a counterbalance. And they do that same thing. It's a tactic they do in its community. Um, why is this so important? Why are you bringing out this? Because I say when we connect the, the dots, we're going to ask ourselves a question. Why are we shopping at Target? Why are we enabling these individuals who are utilizing criminal justice, we're basically funding them to um, use tactics to send our people to prison because that's what they're doing. They're utilizing, they're going into these urban areas and they're utilizing monies to fund police officers, whatever it might be. And we'll break it down specifically with their funding in order to send people to prison, the wrong people. <laughs> They can't even get it right, the wrong people. But but it makes sense in their minds. And I want to point out the specific goals of this, this program. Remember, Target is selling dishes and, and Tide and all that other shit. Um, but you find yourself in the realm of criminal injustice. Um, so one of the specific goals of this study that the Urban Institute was, um, was given the the task of doing, charged with doing, was select comparison sites for impact of analysis purpose. So when they implemented this safe city, um, compared to other cities, matching mall types and retail composition, crime volume, geographical location. So what we can say a text, a, 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 a uh, um, we could say like a sample city, you know, so this is A and this is B and A based on safe city has seen their decrease of certain types of individuals, certain types of crimes, and those individuals not come into the area so they can further it, right? So you start with a micro to macro. So that was the, the purpose of it. So there's a couple of different things I want you to Understand, like, so now you can't say that you didn't know what the city was doing and the purpose of it, because you'll start seeing the statistics coming out. Okay, well, we're we're criminalizing homeless people. We're uh, making individuals' life worse because now, once individuals become in contact with your law enforcement, now they have criminal records and you're disabling them to pursue anything, housing, jobs, employment. Because right, target you don't hire felons, so it behooves you to start criminalize these individuals. So now you can't now, so that they can't not even get employment with your position, your place. They can't get employment anywhere because you're arresting them for being in your area. Um, okay. So at the end of the day, anyone shopping at target, this is my position. It's complicit with assisting this company in incarcerating their loved ones. So why did you, why are you, why are you saying that? I said, why does that make sense? Why why would you say something like that? Just want to go get my funny colored dish, dishes and I want to go talk to the I mean cuz I mean it's the whitest store you ever seen and they're red and tan and uh my electronics and all the other stuff from these individuals. The reason I I, I say what I say about Target is because as I break this further down, you can see where the, your monies are being spent. But let's, I want to first point out, I want to, I went to 2006. I started at 2003 explaining the program to you, Safe City, which is a crime, supposedly a crime prevention um, apparatus that they're going to utilize in a hundred mile radius of their stores in order to ensure or reduce whatever. I, I say sterilization of the area. You can call it what it call you call it what it want. Call you what call it what what you want to call it. 
So in 2020, there was a letter uh, written to Target and um, the security exchange got involved with this. I'm not sure the inner workings of it, but a company. Uh, so it's a private company, but it also has, a, a, I think, a philanthropic part of it. And the philanthropic part of it is called Nathan Cummings Foundation, better known to us as Sarah Lee. Uh, so Sarah Lee has um, stock in Target. Okay. And if you look up the foundation, not Sarah Lee, the foundation has a great ethical moral compass and it, and how it fills itself out. It has a mission statement of being just and equal. So they were really worried about the safe city and their image. It makes sense because I just told you there's no way that Target didn't know what they were doing. Target. Targeting black folks, targeting homeless. That's what they were doing. They knew that what they were doing but it wasn't until Nathan Cummings Foundation wrote him a letter and telling them, asking them as a, a, a stockholder and they're a stakeholder, not a stock, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we want you, we want you to do X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z is what, Mo? Um, the proposal was, or the letter was written uh, saying shareholders of Target Corporation urged the board of directors to instate a prohibition on safe city partnerships unless the board concludes after evaluation evaluation using independent evidence. Because remember, the 2006 was not independent. It was seed money. It's federal government trying to boast the fact that this, this works, right? It does what it's supposed to do. Regardless of who gets affected by it, it does what it needs to do. Independent evidence that these partnerships do not increase the likelihood of violation of civil and human rights and do not exacerbate, exacerbate racial inequalities. So uh, apparently Target didn't know this, that that's what they were doing because this company knew it. Somebody knew it. Somebody knew what was going on and they wanted to remove themselves from any harm that could be associated with their company. Target didn't get no fuck. Keep paying us. Keep sending us those checks in. Keep doing what you're doing. Because we're going to keep spending our money the way buying stadiums that people can't work in, that has felonies. That's, they, want you, they want you to work at seasonal labor. Even in, their, in a lot of their places, they want to hire people on temporary, but they do not want to give you benefits. They, want, they don't want to have you associated with the company. Again, I say that is fine. Fuck Target. Fuck you, Target. We don't want to work for your goofy ass and sell your funny color dishes. Anyway, all we want you to do is repair the harm you caused and get the fuck out the way. You don't you want black folks shopping at Target? Cool. You want people of color shopping at Target? Cool. Motherfuckers spend their money somewhere else. But what we don't want you to do is utilize we, we, uh, utilize your faulty pseudoscience to convict individuals. And we'll get further into that as we continue with this. But we just want to stop establish what the proposal was about. And why the proposal is is so critical in understanding what's going on. All right. So with that, we had um, Nathan Cummings Foundation um, saying they wanted to disassociate themselves, or they wanted they wanted to, they wanted to they wanted to be on the right side of this safe city. And what it looks like for them that it was that Target was doing was basically utilizing safe cities to cleanse the city of individuals they did not like, homeless poor people of color, people of individuals who could not uh, afford to live in that area. They wanted to remove They were going to do it by facial recognition. So what Target does after that, they, 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 they want to rebut this, 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 uh, this assumption, uh, or this, this, this allegation. And they want to give their stakeholders reasons to ensure that Target is not in criminal justice. Target is just in selling dishes, funny color dishes. So what did Target? What does Target do? Um, um, they they dispel it by saying they hadn't recently given money. And what monies are we talking about? Target. We're talking about grants um, being given out to individuals um, from ten thousand um, dollars 
uh, to three thousand from three thousand to ten thousand dollars has been given out to people to individuals. Um, we're talking about um, grants uh, were less than one point uh, five million. I'm thinking this is a cumulative grants because they're small. They're small incremental monies, but a total of one point five million um, has been given has been given out uh, to individuals. Um, and why why are you giving this money out to individuals? Subject matters limit uh, limits for uh, these were public uh, safety grants and um, and and you could and they're grants and not they're not they're grants so they're giving out money to individuals um, specifically law enforcement um, fundings and what did it include? What specific areas were they were they were made you um, so uh, 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 twenty twenty the they, prior to that, so we just let's let's back up for a second. So, so prior to that, so um, they were giving out money. In 2020, in 2020, they refined it because before that, here's what they were giving money out for. It's kind of tricky how they to try to, to word it. They're trying to they because remember they get the letter in 2020 stating that they that they the individuals stakeholders are concerned with the monies they're giving out. They said. After 2020, we we find these specific areas ineligible for funding. So this, in my, I'm interpreting prior to 2020, these were monies that they, these were areas that they were willing to give money for, training, capital of building construction projects, law enforcement, general specialized uh, or investigative investigative equipment, administrative costs such as staff salaries or travel expenses. Um, endowment campaigns, which is well, if you want to if you want to write a, a paper uh, saying that this safe city is great, they endow you with some money to do that. Uh, fundraisers. So I mean, you probably want to check into some of these political campaigns uh, and see if Target, uh, based on uh, a person's um, conversation, that Target didn't provide monies for them for those individuals, um, of, especially if they had a a pro law enforcement, and you can see where where this where you get this this ludicrous conversation. But you have a a place where you're spending your money at that you come spend your hard money with, who's politically inclined and favors the side of this radical Republican. Um, I wouldn't even say radical Republican. I would just say this tough on crime BS. But yet and still us people of color who suffer the most from criminal injustice and and have the the toughest time coming up with money to go to these stores but then you, you, you're getting a double whammy is what i'm getting at so you so you try to go spend your money at these stores yet and still at the on this on the same instance you have individuals incarcerated you have to spend money for um that they're getting taxed the hell out of being incarcerated and you have no money but then still you're giving your money to this place that utilizes your money to incentivize law enforcement to further incarcerate innocent individuals. And we're going to get to the innocent part in a little bit, but that's basically if you follow the money. So it's not so much boycotting as is uh, 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 deinvestment, disinvestment, uh, dispos- um, removing our monies from these areas um, that we find we're spending our money at Spending uh, companies we're spending our money with who don't have our interest in, and we don't understand where our money's being spent with. So you're getting hell coming and going. You're getting hell because you got an individual in prison that you're trying to, or county jail, you're dealing with criminal uh, citations or whatever it might be. Because remember, targets prior to 2020, Target is spending this money on anything law enforcement comes up with. We're talking about fucking. Um, specialized investment equipment. We're talking about travel slot salaries, endowments, weapons, um, weapon related programs. They're in alcohol treatment for these alcoholics that call themselves cops. Anything you could you could go to Target for. They got 1.5 million dollars that they're willing to give out to individuals. Keep that in mind. These individuals, Target, is providing monies to these to this law enforcement, taking your money. Remember, I just told you. That if you're shopping there, you're complicit in them and their tactics. So you can't go to these events and say you want your loved one out of prison when you go to shop at Target and Target is the reason why they're there. 
You're going too far. You're moving too fast. Be I'm going to break that down for you. But right now, I just want you to understand where the money's going and where the money's coming from and how they're taking your money and utilizing it to further incarcerate individuals. And it's 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 indirectly through the the funding of these uh with this grant money. And it took Nathan Cummings Foundation to point this out. Because Target didn't know what they were doing. And like I said, it took up to 2020. So sometime during the whole George Floyd deal and the and the and burning down Target and all this other stuff coming up, do they realize, damn, we fucked up. Whatever. So let's break down a couple of different things. Um, first of all, Target went on a defensive when they were accused of it. They said, well, since 2020, we haven't given the monies away because they they limited, they specified it so far that it, may, it makes it impossible for law enforcement to get the money. It's still there. It's just now we're not going to give you money to go on a trip to the Boundary Waters for whatever reason. Because remember, they're in bed with them. Okay. All right. Let me say that. Let's let's move on. Let's 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 just say target since 2020, you haven't given any money to law enforcement. Somehow you you didn't get a conscious, you just said it would be bad for business. And you're so you didn't even say that. You just you just know now it's bad for business. Um okay. All right, we, let's go with that. Um they also after they said that. Because now they have to dispel these allegations being against them, uh, being waged against them. So they said, on top of that, um, our day-to-day -day business is still selling kitchenware and electronics and all that other stuff. We're not in the law enforcement business. You know, don't get it mis don't get it fucked up. We don't we don't do law enforcement. Um, other unlike Amazon, who actually manufactures surveillance, where they had a factual a factual recognition software that they were selling to the government. We're not doing that. So uh, you can't put us in the same boat with that. We have safe city. We just want we want white folks to be able to walk their dogs and drink they and drink their motherfucking latte cappuccinos, whatever the fuck they drinking. Walk down the street without seeing bums. Homeless people. That's what we want. All right, cool. So that's what Target says. That's they that was their they, that was their defense. That was part of their defense. So they write, they're writing a letter dispelling this. Like, we haven't given money away since 20, uh, 20, uh, 2020, and we're not in that business like Amazon is. But hold up, wait a minute. This is where it really gets real. Um, this is where it comes with it. With a, I guess what Brother Malcolm says, the chicken come on, come on the roots, right? Love it when it happens. In this case, we have Mahdi Ali's case. Old Target shows up, 2010. 10 years before 2020, they in the business. They 48 hours and cops. They selling dishes during the day and fighting crime at night, right? And under the, the guise of crime prevention. Yet still they have the, they're in the partnerships and collaborations with law enforcement, with your money, with your money, with your money, right? You're trying to give, put phone time. You're dealing with phone time and visits to all these, this is a whole criminal justice system it's set around stimulus, uh, a stimulus program for poor white folks. You're feeding them, and you're, you're feeding Target. So, and you're going to work. They're making you go to work, and you. So that's not so. In Mahdi Ali's case, 2010, Target. There was two forensic experts who worked for Target Corporation, and when police were investigating the murders, because remember in Mahdi Ali's case, they cannot see the individuals who's doing the shooting. So what they did is they 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 they, they asked Target. Because remember, Target in 2006, they had this, this institute. they all working in combination together. They write this paper saying that safe cities working. It's the best thing since sliced bread. It's, 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 it's taking us to the Jetson age. In fact, we're selling the TVs. You can buy a TV from us, and then you can walk outside and be able to take that TV home and put it in your house. You know, we're getting rid of all these problems. We, we know what the problem is, and we're getting rid of the problems. The Glad Boys, Craig, this is Target's... <laughs> Target has an accredited uh, forensic crime lab. The lab was created to investigate the company's problems with organized retail crime, but also it does pro bono work for local law enforcement. Now, they don't do pro bono work to help the people who have been charged with these bogus-ass cases. And this is the conversation that we need to have. 
They're not having, they're not helping us get out of the criminal injustice there, but they're willing to help the individuals who are putting us there. And that's, I think that's the biggest understanding I'm trying to get you guys to see. It's like, we're talking about divesting our money in places like Target, but we also saying, how's, how are your money, how's your money's being spent? Because that's important. So Minneapolis police text asked the lab to help investigate the C word market shooting by examining the surveillance camp, the uh, surveillance footage. Um, that target experts came as witness and they said they could not disprove, dis, disprove whether or not Mahdi Ali was that individual. So they didn't say he did or did not do it. They said, hey, more than likely, based on the information you get, he did it. We can't say 100%, 110%, but he, it, 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 you know, it was enough to, to submit, submit his faith, right? It was enough to submit his faith. As expert, from all the stuff they've done previously, they come in as expert, not bringing dishware, not being tied. They come in as expert. Target does your money. So you can understand why I'm happy to see that they're suffering a loss. And I, I feel as personally that there should be no targets anywhere. Now, what are you saying? Why are you so bent against Target? All this other stuff with Target, this, that, this, and that. This and that. Let me break it down and explain it to you and 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 make it make make all this make sense. So I started with explaining to you in 2003, the safe city, 2006, they go get a peer review done. 2010, they help convict Mahdi Ali. 2020, they say, hey, water neat the bridge. You know, all the money we used to give, lease surveillance, go up to Bounty Waters, hunt deer. Blah, blah, blah. We're not giving that money out no more. So Sarah Lee, which is Nathan, Cummings Foundation, we, you don't, your, your, your points are muted. We atone for our sins. A target you haven't atoned for your sins. We want to talk about harm prevention with you. And we want to talk about irrepar uh, irrepar irreparable damage. You've convicted individuals using your faulty forensics because you've sided with law enforcement and you lost your direction. You sell dishes. You don't do crime. I don't give a fuck how much money you guys can you invest in these different programs. The, the criminal justice system, anything you should be, I'm not even reformist, but you should have been trying to reform the system instead of trying to and, and, and embolden the system, continue to do what it did. That's why your fucking stores got burnt the fuck down. Because people, people knew this in the community, what you was on. And black folks been, they been upset with you for the longest. You're just too stupid to fucking realize it. Goofy motherfuckers shopping in your goddamn stores or trying to work for your goofy eye like the DLC. So what are you what are you saying? I'm saying when they were giving out that $1.5 million that's still there available, that they're trying to still give to law enforcement, you might want to try to correct some of the wrongs you've done. You might want to start um those family members of individuals who who who've been convicted based on your faulty information. Maybe you should reach out to those families. And try to get them a lawyer. Maybe that's something you should probably want to do. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that make, makes more sense to you. Uh, some of the communities that you you your 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 faulty forensics and your your crime prevention and 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 the, the disabling people from having jobs based on that the, the bullshit you pull. Maybe you want to reach out to some of those individuals and really set up some type of um, uh, societal con uh, uh, connectivity. Because remember, I started off saying this is not just economics. Because that's all they want to look at it from. It's a social economic issue. Where social economically, we're not spending our money with your goofy ass to you get us a conscious and understand how you destroy the society in this community. That's how this shit breaks down. So, so you might want to bring a check with you to the table when you sit down, when you atone for your sins and the things you've done. Because you knew right off the bat exactly what you were doing. It, you, you had to climb it to, to institute it. So you instituted right or wrong. It did not matter. You instituted it. Um, now you're trying to say that everything is good again and, re and, and refute these arguments. But I don't I, I, I know this individuals right now trying to get out of prison because of your goofy ass doing that stupid ass shit, sending your experts from your your lab when you should have been back there uh, popping popcorn, whatever the fuck y'all do at that dumb ass store. And 
I've been consciously, and that's why I say like, like they, they have this economic complexion to the conversation, but consciously I've not shot with Target since I experienced them. And what is your experience as SAF mode? Saving that for the last, for you individuals who really don't want to hear about XOF, SAF mode experience with it. But my experience with Target has been, first of all, you know, the background check. They don't hire any felons, which is fine. I mean, that they they can do that. You want you want you to you want I, maybe you don't want us to spend money with you, but you definitely don't want us working for you. Cool, fine with that. Walmart's probably the same way. I never applied to work at Walmart. Didn't apply to work at Target. The store actually applied to work at their distribution center because again, my trade is um, I I have a I have, I have trades and I'm 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 cold with what I, what, I, what I do. But besides that, um, as I was getting out of prison, the only thing you can get as a felon is these temporary jobs. And these temporary jobs send you to their stadiums to work for their stadiums to get dogged out working at the stadiums doing dumbass shit and being talked to as a, as a dog because they know they can do it with to you because they know you can't get a job anywhere else. You would not be working in a temp service if you could get a job somewhere else. So, so, so indirectly, they continue to create harm continue to violate people, um, continue to f further this right, this racist, white supremacy uh, uh, conversation uh, and utilize it through individuals that are associated with them. So, so that's that with the whole Target deal. I know everybody has their own experience uh, with this. I mean, you walk in there, you can walk in there and see that Target really doesn't want you in the area. You know what I'm saying? You can see that by the individuals that they have working for them, um, the type of things that they carry, um, and which is fine. You know, I mean, that's them. They, they're suffering it. They're going to continue suffering. Um, I have no intentions of uh, ever shopping with them ever uh, because of uh, I know what they're about. Um, so with that being said, um, continue to keep boycotting Target. Um I said they could sit down at the table and try to write, uh, write some of their wrongs, um, and it's all good. SF more your prison lawyer. SF more your prison lawyer. SF more your prison lawyer. Remember, we need no hundred thousand people watching us. We just need you. Continue to support. What's up, SF? What's up, Ron? Ron, be in the middle. There's a lot in the little, my man. Um, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um, we could try to get that Mahdi Ali out to you. I uh, got another demo I'm shooting out. Um, it's basically taking Prey, Dope. Uh, shout out to the um, the guy who uh, hit me up on Dope and asked me to do a, uh, a, re uh, a re reaction to that. I just I evolved the conversation to Prey, the new movie out the on, 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 on the Predator saga, um, Dope, Spell, and Candyman. I X I I I I, I inter link those movies to um to to express or uh tell the uh, black experience in america code you know what i'm saying uh, uh and that's coming up um this weekend so check that out let me know what you think hit my say in my comment box keep doing this man ain't gonna stop this i'm keep doing it i'm gonna do it keep doing it be doing it uh in, in a homeless box in front of target you know, because they can't stop this because the truth needs to be told. And that's says I'm SAFMO. Don't sing, don't dance, don't rap. Don't tell no don't tell no jokes. I'm gonna give it to you all. I ain't gonna give it to you all. I'm signing out.
has given his life to study as well as teaching our people about their great past and the prospects for an even greater future. He is a man whose presentation of history is penetrating and powerful and he has a way of bringing history alive. And I think that those of you that have heard him before and those of you that are going to hear him tonight know that there's... Era, era, Ron. What do you got to say about uh, SAF Mosan white MFers? I don't give a fuck what anybody says because it's America and you should be able to do and say what the fuck you want. God bless America.